Hey guys, so we missed out on a Season 2 weapon loadout video, and I've been working a lot on my armor sets lately for Season 3. I like to change it up every so often. So we're going to do a Season 3 loadout and I guess sort of fashion show kind of video. All the armor sets and all the weapons that I use for everything that I do. I have armor sets for both raid and non-raid activities for every subclass on every character. I am that much of a loser, you are correct. And I thought it would be fun to do something like this. Uh, if you guys want, feel free to send me some screenshots of your favorite armor sets, stuff that you're using on Twitter, and I'll check them out. Uh, I'm not really sure how good of a video idea this actually is, I'm just really bored. So here goes nothing. We're gonna start with my Titan, my main. My Arc Armor set is still the Season 2 PvP armor with full ornaments except for the helm using the Suros Modular Shine shader on everything. This is also my PvP armor set. I basically only PvP on my Titan. Now for most of my sets in general, I'm using ability cooldown reduction mods if I have them available in that slot. If not, then I'm using some sort of a kinetic reload speed mod instead, and if I don't have access to that, I use whatever I feel like is the strongest thing in that slot. I like ability mods a lot to try to make up for the long cooldowns that abilities have in Destiny 2. That's why I really prefer exotics that boost ability regeneration. Just so happens that most of the good exotics do exactly that, which is good. I really like this armor set. I used it last season as well. Normally, I like to color coordinate my armor sets with the subclass that I'm using. This is one of, I believe, two that goes against that rule. I just really like the red and white with the Suros modular. Basically inverts the default colors on this armor. And for this armor set, I like the shine over more of a matte finish. Something like a noble constant red would work for a matte finish. Some of the other red shaders don't really have pure white. They're more of an off-white or sometimes like a light blue, which I don't really like at all. Or the crimson shaders, which delve too far into the pink side of the spectrum. As for an exotic, Skull Fort is still really good. I don't like how it looks with this armor set, but, you know, it's still really good. Armamentarium is back, which makes it so you don't need to use the top block for double grenades, which is also good. But... I'm also not the hugest fan of how Armamentarium looks with this armor set either. When I want to go into the raid in Arc armor, which is rare, I swap the gloves and class item for the normal mode Leviathan gloves and class item. The reason why I don't use the prestige items is because of the purple glow. It just does not work with the red and the white. Side note, Bungie. If you can make it so armor glows on prestige armor changed with shader application, I and I'm sure many others would really like that so that we're not completely locked to only using that armor with basically two or three shaders that actually look good. I use the gloves and the class item because they are easily the strongest of the raid mod armor pieces. My Sentinel Season 2 kit was a mishmash of Trials Armor, flawless and non-flawless, ornamented and non-ornamented. It was not good. Not good. This time, Season 3 just opted for the Prestige Leviathan Armor with the Dawning Brilliance shader on basically everything. We have calluses selected for the mark. Simple looking, sleek. The shader works with the glow, it's purple, sentinel, you know, that whole thing. Now that Doomfang Pauldrons are getting buffed, I'll actually be using those more often. I never really felt the need to use them because they just didn't really put me over the top. But Doomfangs versus Raid Gloves in the raid, I think either one is okay. You are very rarely going to use Sentinel Super for boss damage unless you have... Tractor Cannon, Melting Point, and then even that, probably Valkor is the only one you can actually use it on. You're going to be using Sentinel Super for Ad Clear, and I think with the Doom Fang buff, you won't need the damage bonus from the gloves for Ad Clear. I'm using Praetorian Visage on the Doom Fangs right now for the white. 
My solar raid set is just a set of the Spire of Stars raid armor with the Escalation Protocol shader. I have retired the big, dumb, gold idiot set from Eater of Worlds from Season 2. It was time for a slight change. I'm hoping for a bit more from Bungie for the Dreaming City raid armor and future raid layers. Because Eater of Worlds armor being the same as Spire, or Spire being the same as Eater of Worlds, basically, not a good look. Not good. I use the Escalation Protocol shader for some of the orange effect. There's not many dark orange shaders out there. I love the Nyx, but the Vanguard armor shaders, I'm just not a huge fan of them. You have some Hake shaders as well, but I'm not too much into the rustic look. My exotic is Hallow Fire Heart. It is far and away the best exotic for Sunbreaker in PvE in general. Although in very specific instances, I will switch to Syntheseps for the bonus super damage when surrounded, namely for Argos. This bonus can work on all of the final raid bosses pretty well. You just need to coordinate with your team to actually leave things alive, which might not always be the easiest thing. The easiest boss to do this on is probably Argos, since everyone is just focused on damage. Harder might be Kaur or Kallus because of positioning on Kaur, and because on Kallus, you typically want to punch a beast in the face for the raid mod bonus on the arms, and there might not be enough of the beasts surrounding you to proc the surrounded bonus if everyone else on your team is killing them. Honestly, part of the reason I don't switch to Syntheseps too often is just because they look ridiculous with my armor set. They just, I mean, I mean, look at them. Look at them. My Solar Strike set is the Escalation Protocol armor with Buffer Overflow. I couldn't find anything that was going to replicate the Wrath of the Machine shaders from Destiny 1, and this is just the one that I ended up going with. I do also use Hallifire Heart with this, which is unfortunate because it really breaks the look of the set. I honestly might just get another Hallowfire Heart and properly match the shaders. I do think I care that much. Moving to my Hunter. My Hunter did not have many completed armor sets in Season 2. I think I only had two. Maybe two and a half. Starting with the Gunslinger, we're rocking a set of Season 2 fully ornamented New Monarchy armor with Celestial Nighthawk. No shaders in the New Monarchy armor. As much as it pains me to say... New Monarchy has pretty strong fashion game and shader game, and I really look the like of the armor set on my Hunter. Not much else to say there. Nighthawk caps it off with a Prestige Leviathan shader to push the gold a little bit more. I'm glad Nighthawk is the armor piece in the helm slot because the helm is just kind of eh. For the raid, we swap to normal Leviathan gloves with New Monarchy Regalia and the Eater of Worlds Cloak, although I do also use the Spire one occasionally, also with Regalia. The Eater of Worlds Cloak is one of the only cloaks, if not the only cloak, that I really like because of the hood. Most of the other cloaks, I don't care how cool the rest of the cloak looks. If I don't like the hood, I'm just not wearing it. Mod-wise, on this subclass, I'm heavier on the reload speed mods because there aren't as many ability mods available. Don't need melee mods too much because precision throwing knife kills are instant refresh with the subclass block that I'm using. Next up is my Arc Strider set, which is among my favorite sets. Very simple look. I think it's super sleek. We're using the Road Complex set with Precursor Vex Chrome on everything except for the Eater of Worlds Cloak, which has a normal Leviathan shader in it because I'm cheap. I also have that on my Lucky Raspberry, again because I'm cheap. Raiden Flux, I'm using the ornament because it matches perfectly to the rest of the armor set. Before the ornament came out, it just never felt complete because of the, I guess, the ribs on the Raiden Flux were orange. Now, I think it looks fantastic. For the raid, we swap to the blandest arms of all time, the Eater of Worlds arms, with a normal Leviathan shader on it, just trying to keep the super slim form. You know, you gotta be agile with the Arc Strider. You can't be wearing bulky armor. It just doesn't make sense. Raiden Flux is the exotic that I use for very obvious reasons. It's insane. The Night Stalker set, that I use for Season 3 is the Braytech armor 
with the Mad Monk shader with Orpheus Rig. Again, Orpheus Rig, pretty obvious. I'm not sure how much I really love this set, though. I think we can do better than, than what we have right now. I might try to finish off my Escalation Protocol set on my Hunter and see how that looks with a darker shader. My old set for Season 2 was the Vanguard Season 2 ornament set with normal Leviathan shaders. Wasn't really into that one too much, though, either. I might try out the Spire of Stars armor set. I actually haven't used either Eater of Worlds nor Spire armor sets for my Hunter in the past two seasons, so I'll probably take a look at that. Very heavy in ability mods here. Two grenade, one melee, one class mod. And again, for raids, we swap to boring Eater of Worlds gloves. Now for my Warlock, who basically only had one armor set for most of Season 2, which was for Dawnblade, but we're going to start with Void. For the Voidwalker, we're using Prestige Leviathan Armor with Nebula Rose on most of it. I wasn't into Arctic Pearl, but I am very much considering switching to the new future War Cult shader, War Cult Scheme. It's got a much heavier purple tone to it, more of a matte finish instead of a shine. I do not like the Leviathan Helm at all, so I'm still looking for a new one. But when I don't have to be wearing Lunafaction boots which is not very often because they're just stupid right now, I am wearing Nezarex Sin, which gets rid of the helm problem. My Bond, I just kind of swap around whenever I feel like it. Most of them have Recovery as a mod in them, and again, I'm very heavy in Ability Cooldown mods. The only set that I had completed for Season 2 is my Dawnblade set, which for the time being, I have still kept from Season 2. It is the Eater of Worlds full set with Luna Factions, since Luna Factions do not get in the way of the fashion game, with Metro Shift on everything, the only other set to break the color match rule. Dawnblade doesn't really have any exotics that are spectacular at the moment for PvE, specifically for Dawnblade, or any exotics that feel necessary besides Luna Faction. Vesper of Radius isn't too bad. The Stag isn't too bad, both granting lots of Rift energy. I think I'd probably go Stag over Radius since I get myself into danger way more often than I should. But if you're in a raid environment, you're probably just going to have Luna Factions on. The Stag works well with the armor sets, so I'd probably end up using that for non-serious strike farming if we didn't need Lunas, which, spoilers, you're probably going to use anyway. My Arc set has gone through quite a few iterations, but I think I finally found one that I'm happy with, and that is with the Season 1 Optimacy set from Eververse using Crown of Tempests. This is the only armor set from Eververse that I use, although I do have most of the pieces from the Season 3 sets on all my characters, and so I'm looking to see where I can rotate those into my game. I'm mainly looking at shaders right now. Crown of Tempests or the Optimacy Helm, if I'm using Lunafaction, with the Optimacy Gloves and Chest Armor to round it out. Focusing Boots from Trials, if I'm going with Crown of Tempests. The shader is Xeno Silver, which is a shader I've wanted to use for quite a while, but never really found a use for. It usually ended up being more of a bluish kind of color instead of a pure silver kind of shine. However, I think it works well here, especially with the Crown of Tempests ornament, which I also use, which actually utilizes part of the shader, whereas the non-ornamented version of the crown barely touches the shader at all. Now for the weapon loadouts, which is probably the only thing you actually care about. In Prestige, and I guess Normal Leviathan as well, my loadout is Midnight Coup, or Antiope, if I'm bored, along with Inaugural Address and Legend of Acrius. Legend of Acrius works great on the first three encounters. It kills bathers in the baths in two shots. It kills beasts pretty darn well in the gardens, although there are better options. And it kills centurions in the gauntlet very easily as well, two shots. I swap to a curtain call for Callus, although you can definitely use Darcy or any other strong item in that slot. Midnight Coup, I've said it a million times, it's just an insanely good gun. Inaugural Address on PC is also crazy good. If you're on console and you don't like Inaugural Address, it kind of is like, eh, on console. Positive Outlook is nice. Pleiades Corrector from FWC is good. Manana and stuff like that. 
Moving to Eater of Worlds, I swap the Curtain Call to Darcy, and the main weapons stay the same, Midnight Coup and Inaugural Address. Eater of Worlds isn't terribly demanding in terms of needing to slay a lot of enemies, except for the final encounter, but even then you're going to have a lot of people together, so it doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, Eater of Worlds is just not very demanding in terms of your primary weapons. For Spire of Stars, I swap out the Midnight Coup for the Huckleberry and my Darcy for the Icolos Sniper. The reason I swap out the Darcy for the Icolos Sniper is because Huckleberry is an exotic and I find it just really, really fun. The Huckleberry is insane for Spire of Stars, especially if you put yourself in spots where you can really take advantage of the bonuses on it. During the opening encounter, it's great if you are not being one of the ball throwers and you're just focusing on ad killing. And then for Kaur, it's great there too and really allows you to play aggressively. You can kill enemies as they're coming out of the door. You stack Rampage up really fast. You never stop shooting. It's really fun and it's really effective. It's crazy, crazy good there. Before I got Huckleberry, I just used Midnight Coup. Shocker, I know. But... If you're doing some Spire of Stars and you're just feeling kind of bored, you want to change things up, Huckleberry is legit. As I said earlier, feel free to send me your own armor sets on Twitter. I'm interested to see what you guys are ending up using. I'm looking forward to seeing how Season 4 armor sets turn out, especially with the ability to now actually collect all of the armor sets when Forsaken comes out. There's a bunch of stuff that I would like to try if I had the space for it. I just don't. Hopefully this was a fun watch. I know it's a bit of a departure from the norm. Uh, if, you, if you had fun with this, you know, let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.